courses for next year and the options that you have for next year, it's kind of crazy at the beginning of January to think about next year, but we actually have to start doing that. Um, in particular, because you're gonna be meeting with your guidance counselors to make these choices so that we can build a schedule for all of you. A um, Couple of things to think about. One is hopefully we'll be back in school fully in person and it'll be a new year and things will be back to somewhat normal and we'll all be vaccinated. And it's actually exciting to think about next year um, and think about the possibilities. You're gonna wanna listen carefully. Many of you know a lot of these options. Um, I see someone with their mask down who's sitting right next to someone else. Put your masks up, please. Um, so it's important to know these options. Many of you are aware of them and consider, and your counselor is gonna help you think about this, your overall course load. You don't wanna load up on everything and then find yourself overwhelmed because in particular in the fall, seniors have a lot to manage in terms of college applications. So you're gonna to wanna to think about what courses you're really passionate about taking. You're gonna to wanna to think about balance and how you balance those courses. You don't wanna take a lot of a certain kind of co course that might include a lot of reading or memorization um, and, and pile that on, on yourself for your senior year. And you wanna about, think about things that you might wanna consider exploring in college and take some time next year to maybe investigate those things. So again, your counselors are gonna meet with you individually to make these decisions. I'll say one last thing, and that is we build the master schedule based upon your requests. So the more accurately you can tell us now what you're gonna take next year, the more likely you are to be scheduled into it. If all of a sudden in June, you change your idea of what you wanna do, your schedule might not work, okay? So the better you can give us an accurate idea of what you wanna take, the better we are at trying to make all those pieces fit together. Now I'm gonna hand it over to Mr. Kind and the curriculum leaders of each department are gonna share with you the amazing courses that we have to offer you. Thanks, Ann. I think uh, in the spirit of time, I'm just gonna let Rob jump in. Um, I will say for the students, after the teacher kind of presents the courses for their department, we'll, we'll pause to see if you have any questions, which we're gonna ask you to put in the chat. So we'll give it like a, a solid, I guess, minute or two for you to type if, if there are any questions. At the end, uh, or I should say, after each teacher presents, they're gonna log off. So uh, the counselors, I'd imagine Ms. Meyer as well, will we'll stay on just for a few closing comments and to ask, to answer any general questions. Um, but this is, you know, this is really kind of your time uh, to better understand what's being offered next year and, and again, begin to sort of formulate some ideas about what you want to take. So let me just try to share my screen here. And Rob, you can, uh, you can go for it. All right. Hey, juniors or soon to be seniors. Uh, welcome. Um, it's crazy. In a year, um, some of you will be in college. Um, you'll all be done with your applications and will be waiting. Um, it's coming fast. Um, so for next year, for English, you basically have two options. Um, the first one uh, is English 12. Um, that's a, a blend of, of fiction and nonfiction. Um, you'll read widely uh, from Into the Wild uh, to Outliers to some Sophocles, Brave New World, Play, Streetcar Named Desire, Metamorphosis, things they carried. Um, throughout the, it'll be a very balanced course uh, in terms of uh, traditional English, uh, but also real world applications. I know Ms. Agarabi goes to pains to make sure um, that uh, students are, are doing things that are, that are interesting uh, and engaging like not just discussions, but, um, but debates. Um, and there's a, a documentary project in the spring, um, you guys teaching and leading lessons. Um, so it's basically the handoff between high school and college. Um, it's, a, it's a, in terms of workload, a standard workload, shall we say, like 
yes, it's still it's still English uh, and it's still high school. So there, there are still things to do, um, but I don't think you it should be described as overbearing. Um, the other option would be AP Lit. Uh, and Mr. D uh, encouraged me to, to tell you this. Um, it's supposed to be challenging. Um, it's also supposed to be pitched at students who are who, who would like to explore the humanities uh, in, in college. So um, for those of you in taking AP Lang with me, that one's more of the Swiss army knife uh, of AP courses. It, like that, that course is focused on writing, as you know, um, and it applies to really almost any student for whatever you wanna do in college. AP Lit um, is supposed to be more specialized. Um, it, it's pure analysis. Um, so it spans like almost all English literature. Right? You're gonna go back to the 16th century um, and right up until now and you'll read a lot. So uh, he asked me to emphasize that he, you should expect to be reading about an hour every night. Um, in terms of, I, I, there's too much, I, I didn't have enough space on the slide to put on all the works um, that he intends to go through during the year, but this is the summer work. So there's a, a nonfiction book, How to Read Literature Like a Professor. Um, there's a, a long poem, that isn't a big deal. And then he's asking for three out of the four novels you see down there from this side of paradise, Go Tell on a Mountain, Beloved, or The Alchemist. Um, it's a lot. I would just encourage you, I mean, I, I'm an English teacher, I love books. Uh, this would be right up my alley. It may be for many of you, it may not be. Um, just think very, very carefully um, whether you want to commit to, to that amount of reading. Um, if you are passionate about analysis um, and poetry, there'll be a ton of that as well, um, then this is definitely the course for you. If this gives you, this gives you the, the willies a little bit, um, because it, you'll be reading a lot of old, old stuff and a lot of new stuff, and it's all going to be challenging. Um, there's nothing wrong with taking English 12H. Um, AP Lit also uh, culminates in an exam uh, in May, which is required. Um, and now it's probably a good place for me to pause and, and, and answer any questions you guys might have. Let's see if I take a look at the chat. I'll just pause and wait for questions to appear. You could stare at me looking intently at the screen. I'm seeing nothing showing up. All right. Well, then I guess uh, that is either a good sign <laughs> or we will field many questions when you are gone. That's okay. And if you guys do have other questions, I, I teach many of you, um, you can just talk to me in class. Uh, we can invite uh, Mr. D into class to speak with you at a later date if that's something people are interested in um, or talk to your, uh, you know, or, or talk to any of us at any point, or, and especially your guidance counselors too. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Cross. Appreciate your time. Have a wonderful weekend. Ms. Landsman, you are uh, at bat. Okay. Um, how are you guys? Um, this is very exciting to be able to go over your senior year class options for next year. Um, so political science and economics, um, you guys are going to take political science is the constitutional foundations of the U.S the branches of government, the bureaucracy, and the development of public policy, civil liberties, and civil rights um, and political theory. Um, economics is um, looking at the understanding of the US economy, both at the macro and micro level, um, and its relationship to global markets. You also have the opportunity to take some electives, um, which are the Bronco TV production. Um, know that this is a full year course, and you'll learn how to produce a television show um, more in depth about the um, world of the media. And you'll also work um, in creating Bronco TV and also um, work in the new TV studio. Okay, lastly, you have the option of an elective which is introduction to business management. Um, and this helps you to develop your understanding of various objectives, functions and activities of various types of businesses. Um, I was asked by Mr. Klerfeld uh, to just read a little statement about um, AP um, economics. Um, he said that he wants you to know that with regard to AP econ, the most successful uh, students have been good in both math and in policy courses um, because of the fact that math is so heavily 
um, used within AP economics. Also, um, keep in mind your senior year is a very busy year, especially the first half. Um, it's very important that if you choose to take AP Econ, that you are ready to um, you know, work hard and put in the time that's needed in order to accomplish all of the tasks um, for that course. Okay, um, and then there's just an example of the summer assignment um, that's gonna be used for AP Econ. All right, it's a very intensive course, both math and um, social sciences. Okay, and then can you go to the next slide? Yes, most definitely. I have a, a message from uh, Mr. Meyer. Okay, so the um, humanities course um, was renamed to the research seminar on uh, educational inequality. Um, so that is uh, what you might have heard of in the past called the humanities course. Um, he also wanted me to let you know that the uh, structural inequalities and advocacy course um, is going to be open up just to 12th graders this year. Okay, so this is um, a time for you to really dive in deeper to um, issues of race, equality, uh, equity, and justice. Okay, and then the last part of the service learning courses um, is the student global leadership course. Um, and he has told me that it is going to be fully virtual this year. And there's going to be an application process that's going to be shared with you guys um, very soon that is going to be due by February 12th. And um, all of these applications will be viewed by the entire um, social studies department and administration. Does anybody have any questions for me? And if you think of a question later on, you could always um, pop into my Zoom or email me. Um, so political science and economics, they're each a semester course. Um, and AP Econ can be taken in lieu of that, yes. Any other questions? Um, the structural, you're going to be signing up for that. Yes. Um, that's the course that's open up to all 12th graders, the structural inequalities in that course. So if that's something that interests you, yes, you can sign up for that. Um, the business, oh, there's lots of questions. Hang on. <laughs> Let me pull up the, the chat slide. Um, the introduction to business management is a semester course and it'll be offered in the, in the spring um, economics mandatory for every student, yes. Can you double up on history classes? We would love that. We love to have kids in history classes. So if it fits into your schedule, sign up for as many as you can. Um, if that's something that you're passionate about, we'd love to have you. Any other questions? All right, if you think of something later on, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer them for you. Thank you, Ms. Landsman. No um, Mr. Cornish. Good morning, all. All right, so here's what you see in front of you is um, the offerings from science for your senior year. And uh, because of the way it works, some of you within this cohort have, have taken some of these courses already. Um, and so one of the best uh, resources, if you have questions about some of these courses, is going to be some of your peers. Um, but in short, on the left side, what you've got is the level two sciences and some of the electives. And on the right hand side, you've got the AP coursework. Um, bio, bio two runs um, most every year, as does Earth Science two and M2, we run on an annual basis now also. They seem to be pretty popular courses. Uh, forensic science is one of those every other years. It's not running this year, but it will run next year. Uh, computational physics, or it's otherwise perhaps advanced physics in the catalog, um, that one is, a, is a, a computer science course, if you like, using... Um, real world phenomenon to to be the context and the groundwork for doing some coding um, and so it's it's a physics course at heart but the essence of it is to build some software and learn a learn a software language 
and that language changes each time um, the course is run. The Bronx River Research course, as, as some of you have experienced and, and you've heard about, it's, it's a research-based course. It's, it's a, a project-based course alone. Uh, if, if that one's of interest to you, be sure that you understand the expectations going into that particular course um, where you're, you're, um, there's a lot of expectation on the student to uh, formulate their own problems, look at their own problems and uh, come up with research methodologies and even go to um, a variety of different conferences if possible to present your research and findings. You can work with an external mentor if possible, um, but it's purely just a research-based experience. Um, the AP courses on the right-hand side, um, some of you, like mentioned, you have done them before. So the uh, one which I really want to point out there, um, or maybe some of you, because of you guys are juniors, you might a good portion of you might be in AP Chem, um, you'll know that it's a math-heavy course. So keep that in mind should you be choosing that. Uh, the AP Physics 1 and AP Physics 2 stream, which we've now got, uh, AP Physics 1 is now just Newtonian mechanics alone. It's the single AP course out of all of them, which has uh, just recently seen a reduction in content, but that's only because that content is covered in AP 2. So AP 1 is uh, Newtonian mechanics and uh, AP Physics 2 is things like uh, thermodynamics, waves and optics, a little bit of nuclear and quantum. Um, the Fundamentals of Engineering course, which is the, the uh, uh, single uh, semester elective down the bottom, it again is a project-based course. Um, and so the expectation with that one is we've now got this fabulous new room down here with a whole bunch of tools and materials and it's project-based to build out prototypes, try them out. Um, the footnote at the bottom there, just like most other AP courses, the ones you see on the right-hand column, there's, there's going to be summer work involved for all of those uh, AP courses. So keep that in mind. They are AP level and going into your senior year, that's something you want to keep in mind. They're AP level and the expectation is as such. Uh, I was also going to speak to a couple other courses, Aaron, if you... Um, yeah, go for it. They're on a different slide, but I yeah. go for it. Yep. They're on a different slide, two, two ahead. I don't know whether you want to jump to it. Uh, yeah, I could do that. That's fine. Just so it's a visual in front of us as well. So um, this is under computer science. Um, I just wanted to mention the robotics piece as well as entrepreneurship. So presently we've got, and just beginning this year, we've got uh, robotics and it's listed there as competitive and introduction to. They're currently in one section. The students are just it's just a label, essentially. Everyone's in the same class. Uh, the original idea was those that sign up to competitive robotics, perhaps they've got a bit more of an, a solid interest or passion or experience uh, to pursue that, whereby there's the possibility to go to external competitions. Um, and that hasn't happened this year because of the nature and the environment we find ourselves in. Um, but hopefully that changes for next year. So currently robotics, those two pieces together is just a one semester class. And then the entrepreneurship one and two, they are similarly one semester a piece, but if you were to follow that entrepreneurship stream, you then end up filling up a full year. Uh, those ones almost goes without saying they're a project-based course, all of them. Um, and we run them down here in this same space where you've got physical materials and tools by which to you know, do either the robotics or the entrepreneurship stuff. You can uh, build out business ideas, plans, prototypes, whatever it might be. So that might be a good place to stop. Um, if you guys got any questions, um, put them in the chat real quick. Otherwise, I'll reach out. Do computer science classes count as a math or science? They count what, as a math. Right? Yeah, uh, the computer science classes, uh, more specifically, the AP computer science and the Java classes are considered math classes. Um, sorry, go. You're right. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I just 
I can't tell who's chatting me, so I'm um, we're chatting, so I'm leaving it up to you to monitor. But yeah, no, if that, that's the only one I see. Okay. So far, so. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cornish, Miss Moppin. I'm going to go back for your math slides if you can um, help us out here. Sorry, I have to unmute. Um, actually, I'm going to start with um, the electives because one of the electives is AP Computer Science, and um, my slide is in, is actually incorrect. So um, for AP Computer Science, you no longer have to take Java as a prerequisite, and that is counted as a math course. AP Computer Science Principles is not. The Intro to Java course is counted as a math course. Okay, and um, Mr. Um, kind if we could go back to the math. Sure, course. yep. Okay, so in math, what you take next year is pretty much dependent on what you took this year. So that's how this schematic works. If you are currently in geometry, the next class you would take would be Algebra 2. If you are in Algebra 2, you would take FST, Function Statistics and Trigonometry. If you are in Function Statistics and Trigonometry, you would go to Precalculus H. If you are currently in Precalculus H, you have a choice. You can go to um, non-AP Calculus or you can go to AB Calculus. Um, if you are struggling in Precalculus honors, then I would suggest that you probably would be more comfortable in the non-AP calculus class. Um, Mr. Ruiz teaches that and I understand it's a lot of fun. If you are currently in differential calculus, you have two choices. Um, you can go to either BC calculus or you can go to AB calculus. Both of those are advanced placement courses. Um, and again, if you are struggling in diff calc or if you think that maybe you don't need to have quite this much math next year as a senior, then you can take AB Calculus. Generally about a, a third of the students in diff calc opt to take AB Calculus and about two thirds of them go on to BC Calculus. The um, um, electives are um, AP Statistics. To be in AP Statistics, you need to have had Precalculus or um, diff calc. F2PC is, should have actually been Algebra 2 with topics in Precalculus because you need to have seen logs before you take AP stats. And I think I've talked about AP computer science. So does anybody have any questions? Nothing in the chat. Nothing in the chat. OK. OK, guys. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Uh, bye bye. Miss Flood. Hey, salwete omnes, bonjour and hola. Welcome to uh, World Languages. So this is primarily for students, or I'm talking about students who are right now in the currently in the level four course. Uh, this would be your next option. And then I'll tell you a little bit about options. Um, oh, there's a question about pre-calc. Is Cynthia still there? No, okay. Um, so hey, let me. Let me see if I can answer it. Okay. Um, for the student who asked about if they're in FST now and take pre-calc in the summer, could they take calc? That's something to talk to your current teacher about and they will consult with Ms. Malpen to figure out if that's possible and to give you the best advice about how to make that possible. Sorry, Denise. That's okay. Okay, so for most students in level four language, you would be moving on to the AP level in your French or Latin or Spanish. Um, in AP French, students will be exposed to reading, writing, speaking, and listening in an intermediate level college course um, where you explore different concepts related to family, community, identity, beauty, aesthetics, technology, um, global challenges. There is summer work for this course and um, the expectation is that you take the AP and in May at the end of the course. Um, if you are in AP in, in Latin four, you would be taking AP Latin, which is focusing on two great works, one Virgil's Aeneid, which we will review, which we're actually currently studying in level four, and then Caesar's Gallic Wars. Um, this course, again, cultivates the understanding of classics through some themes like literary techniques, Roman values, war and empire, leadership, uh, memory, human beings, and the gods. So the first is an epic saga and the second is Caesar, Caesar's account of his wars in Gaul. This also requires some summer work and is culminates in the AP exam in May. 
The AP Spanish Language and Culture course is similar in, in structure to the AP French and also will be you will be enhancing your abilities to speak, read, uh, listen and write in the language and explore concepts related to identity, beauty, science, contemporary life and global challenges. This course would also require summer work and, and culminates in the AP exam in May. Um, if you feel like you, you want to continue with language, but you may not want to work on or, or are not up for the challenge of an AP course in the language, um, then you could choose the French CCC course, Latin 5 or Spanish 5. Um, if you are thinking of just stopping your language in the fourth level, which I don't recommend, but if you are, you can also jump into a, a level one and try another language. Um, at this point, we have Spanish one, uh, possibly offering French one and uh, Latin one, uh, if there is a need for that. Okay, um, any questions about the language choices for next year? If you are in a level three or a level two or a one of a language now, you would just go up to your next level next year. Uh, Ms. Okay. Flood, do you want to talk about the electives? Yeah, and I'll go on to, yep. yeah, I'll go on to the next slide. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the World Language Department, the teachers uh, have created two electives, a two semester, each a semester course uh, that will be taught by uh, whichever teacher has availability. Uh, but both of these courses, uh, and we encourage you to take them, one is a philosophy course, which will explore the contributions of some of the greatest minds to the century and how their innovative thought have in revolutionized our understanding of the world and changed the course of history. So if you're interested in philosophy, this would be a great um, you know, introductory course for you. Uh, mythology, students love mythology, and so we have a course that will examine the relevance of mythology um, as a way to interpret life experiences across the span of time in various cultures and recognizing their endure, the enduring relevance of mythology today. So if you're interested in, in going into a little bit more of a deeper dive with mythology, that is another course that you may want to take. So those are two electives. They will be taught in English. They are semester courses. Okay, I'll go on. And then I'm, uh, any questions about language at this point? Okay, if you have questions about languages, you can also see your language teacher, uh, myself, Madame Gillen, uh, Senora Napolitano, we teach the, at this point, the upper level courses. So you can speak to your current teacher or to your, uh, the AP teacher of the course currently. Okay, I also uh, am the teacher of the WISE Senior Internship course. And I highly recommend this course to students. And this is a capstone experience where students have the opportunity to explore Oh, is there Mandarin three? I'm not sure. There should be Mandarin three, yes. Yes, yes. Three. yes. Yep. Okay. So the Mandarin courses, if you are in a Mandarin course, will, will there be Mandarin one, two, and three? Do we know? Yes. yes. Okay, so if you, are, if you have decided to take Mandarin, you can go up in your level of Mandarin, and then Mandarin one will also be offered with the other level one languages. Um, so if you are uh, interested in doing an internship in your second semester of your senior year, you would take the WISE internship course, which is a year long course. Uh, we meet once per cycle throughout the year for 40 minutes. In the first semester, we design your internship and create a digital portfolio. And in the second semester, you embark on your internship. The one benefit of this course is that in the second semester, when you do your internship, you actually opt out of either your English or your social studies course. So then you would not take English 12 or, or economics or poli sci in the second semester. The, the WISE internship course would count for that credit. However, you cannot be enrolled in both AP economics and AP lit at the same, at, and to drop out of those. Um, it would be one or the other. And then what you do is you log hours in your internship that are equivalent to the class time. You create weekly journals, you write a research paper, and you present your experience in a final presentation to the faculty and staff. And so we have the icons of the Bronxville Promise because this course really encompasses the entire uh, Bronxville Promise where we uh, get you out there engaging the world, you research and use your critical thinking skills, uh, you collaborate with others as you reflect on your experience, uh, and you innovate as you create and design your experience and research project. Okay, any questions about whys? All right, that's great. That was, yeah, no, that was great. Thank you. I just wanna 
clarify one thing. You can take AP Economics and AP Literature and WISE. You just cannot get out of either of those classes to yes. fulfill the hours. So there's Thank a you. component of, of time for the internship. And so to, to give you students time, you're able to get out of either English 12 or social studies. You just can't get out of an AP class because you are still working on that material for the yes. exam. Um, but you could still be, you can do all three. You could. Just, yeah. Yes. It just, yeah. Okay. It's just Good. you'd have to do the internship on your own time. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Flood. All right, yeah. Ms. Allen, you're up. Hello. So I'm going to talk about your options in the visual arts as a senior. So for those of you who are currently taking art, um, typically juniors are in art three. So you would have the option of going into AP art and design or art four. Um, and I would be able to talk to you each about whether or not that would be a good idea for you to take the AP or um, art four, which is non-AP. Um, you also have the option of taking AP art history, which is um, a class where you're analyzing art through history from prehistory to contemporary art and placing them in the historical context. Um, you're exploring like cultural interaction theories and interpretation of art. Uh, it's a really fun class and hopefully next year we'll be able to um, go see art in person again on field trips. Um, you also have some elective options. Uh, digital photography, which is a half year, uh, typically uh, all different concepts of introduction to photography. Uh, computer art, which is typically teaching Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and Procreate on the iPad. Um, this year, given our situation, we're doing everything on the iPad from graphic design to animation, which is pretty fun. And then you would also have the option of taking ceramics, which is all hand building in clay. Those options are open to anybody. Um, the thing I want to emphasize that Ms. Meyer mentioned is that our schedule is made based on what people sign up for. So it is important if you are interested in taking these classes to sign up for it now so that we can make sure the class runs. Um, last thing I want to say is that if you are not in art three as a junior, but you're taking art and you want to continue or consider AP art, you can definitely come speak to me and um, we can look at your portfolio and see if that would be an option for you. So definitely talk to your teacher at this point and see what you're interested in. All right, does anyone have any questions? All right, Oop, was that a question? Does AP art history count as an art credit? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I won. Yes, it does. Yes. We're good. I can't. Yeah. All right. I see you. Okay. All right. Moving on, uh, Dr. Luter, if you could take us take us home here. Absolutely. I know that all of the high school musicians are looking forward to next year as much as the music teachers when we can have the return of our ensembles. And you've been working very hard uh, this year to keep your skills uh, moving forward. And we really need your leadership next fall to help us rebuild our uh, ensemble program. So we offer band, um, honors band and uh, band chorus and orchestra and honors orchestra. And if you have any questions about how you qualify for either of the honors groups, uh, please see a music teacher. Um, we would assume that most seniors would be in the honors group. We also offer a theory and music composition. The introductory course is music theory and you would learn the basics of uh, composing melodies, learning about key signatures, how to create chords. And then that uh, course could morph into AP music theory where you would take the actual exam and be writing four part harmony, bass lines, uh, listening to music, analyzing it. And the best thing to do if you are on the fence about whether to do music theory or AP music theory is to stop by and have a chat with me and I'd be happy to walk, walk you through um, the differences between those two courses. And there's also independent study and many of the students who have taken independent study are interested in composition. So if you're interested in composition, I'm happy to help you with that. But there are many other opportunities for independent study. You could talk to any of the music teachers about that. 
And then finally, we have a new course that we're very excited to be offering next fall, and that's the digital sound production course. You will be using your computer as a music instrument. And so um, you might be using a software program or doing actual coding that will produce the sounds that we hear or you could uh, play live and um, create something on the nature of a virtual concert like many of us have seen uh, given the COVID restrictions. So um, you might have a project at the end of it where you create music for a video game or a film or some kind of art installation even. Um, and so it's a very creative uh, course, one, one that um, if you have a creative bent and haven't been able to explore that yet in high school, um, that would be a great place for you to spend some time next year. So I know it's been a long presentation today, so I won't ask if you have questions, but certainly stop by to see your music teachers if we can help you make decisions about next year. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Luder. Um, okay, so juniors, if I can get this going, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, just, uh, I'm going to send these slides to everybody. Uh, in terms of registration, it's the same thing as last year and the year before that, which is you can now go on to Infinite Campus and pick which classes you would like to take. Uh, you should also be able to see recommendations of certain courses. Uh, that have been done by your teachers. So you'll be recommended for an English class, for a history class, for a math class. Science is going to suggest that you either are ready for an advanced placement class or that you should consider taking an honors level class. Um, and, and from there, you can fill in any gaps that uh, of courses that you wanna take or any electives. The uh, meeting with your counselor could be as early as next week a letter is being uh, sent home and an email will also follow that letter with a Zoom link for you to join your counselor and a parent uh, on a call to discuss classes um, and anything else that's on your mind. Um, I think I'm going to stop and turn it over to Ms. Meyer just for some closing comments. Also, I, again, I just, um, as Ms. Meyer mentioned in the beginning, we don't know what school is going to look like in September, um, but you know, I, I guess it's probably worth keeping in mind if if things continue the way they are, like what classes you want to be enrolled in, um, or how many classes you want to be enrolled in. Um, we obviously hope that things look like they did during your ninth grade year uh, for school, that is in person and no more mask and etc. But um, we don't know that now, and we probably won't know that for for quite some time. Uh, Ms. Meyer. Great. So I just want to step back and remind you that what you're going to do is meet with your counselor, speak with your parents, go online and do your signups. And you're going to be looking to continue what you're in and think about some of the electives that you may want to take. So remember, for a small school like ours, we have quite a few options. So think about what you're interested in and maybe what you're interested in in college and wanna kind of get a little bit of a taste for here. I just wanna be clear, WISE is only for seniors. It allows you in second semester to do an internship instead of English or social studies, as long as you're not in both of those as APs. That is a great option. By the second semester of your senior year, you're gonna be ready to get out of this building. Um, that has been wonderful for people. Also the um, seminar, Structural Inequities and Advocacy, that is not 80 minutes every other day. That's a seminar, it takes less time in your schedule and it's more independent. So you're gonna to wanna to understand that that wouldn't take an 80 minute slot. It would probably pair with PE, for instance. Um, and then some of these other options for you, ceramics, digital um, music, entrepreneurship, robotics, these are all things you could, you know, try and may or may not fit in your schedule. It's going to depend on how the schedule is built, but I will tell you that for electives, we only run them if we have enough people who sign up. So as Ms. Allen said, if you're interested, sign up now so that we can try to run the course. Um, 
That's about it. Just remember balance. You know, you don't have to take everything all at once next year. Your guidance counselor is going to help you figure that out. But take this process seriously. It feels early. Um, it feels early to be considering this, but this is actually the time we need you to sign up. Independent studies, we're having a conversation about this. It's unlikely that you're going to be able to do multiple independent studies unless it's a unique circumstance because it's really, to be honest with you, gotten out of hand in some cases. So that's a conversation the guidance department and I will be talking through. So stay tuned on that one and your guidance counselor will be your best resource for that info. Any other questions for Mr. Kind, myself, any of the guidance counselors? And of course, you can email any of us at any point with questions. All right, I'm good on my end, Mr. Kind. Okay, yeah, um, I guess I'm good as well. All right, we're gonna get you out a minute late. Um, you know, everybody have a nice weekend, be safe. Uh, we will see you all virtually soon in the counseling department, that is. Um, and if you have any questions, just you know how to I, you know how to get a hold of everybody. All right, bye everybody.